to an examiner. Just two hours later, Gray's courier, carrying the crucial diagram, presented the bundle of patent applications to the same man. The race for the invention that would change the world came down to a photo finish. Now, yes, that could be a coincidence. Two men from different sides of the continent appearing in the same office, in front of the same examiner, on the same day, with the same idea. But what happened next doesn't look like a coincidence at all. You see, within a few days, this paragraph appeared on Bell's patent application, fleshing it out, giving more detail. And back in his laboratory, Bell drew this diagram. Should we compare it to the one that had been drawn by Gray a few weeks earlier? Same use of liquid, same transmitter, same head. <laughs> I'm prepared to put the same day thing down to a coincidence, but this, this is altogether rather more fishy. So what happened? How did Gray's idea end up on Bell's patent application? Well, it's the old, old story. With so much money to be made from the patents, petty cash was in plentiful supply. The temptation to accept bribery was overwhelming. Both applications arrived in the hands of one man, Zenas Wilbur. And as Zenas admitted in later life, it was he who sold Elisha Gray's idea to Bell's lawyers. So instead of Gray, it was Bell who was granted the lucrative patent for the telephone. At the time, no one realized what had happened, but Bell leapt into the lead. Armed with his new ideas, the breakthroughs just kept on coming. This is quite a bit different from what we're doing in the past. Yes. Just two weeks after filing his magic self-altering patent, Alexander Graham Bell had got himself a brand new design. At its heart lay a freshly, um, invented liquid transmitter. In fact, the whole setup was remarkably similar to Gray's diagram. But no matter, Bell was poised to make history. Mr. Watson! Come here, won't you? I heard it. I heard it. You heard what? I heard you call me. So to be fair... <sighs> it worked. However he came to do it, Alexander Graham Bell did make a phone call in March 1876. But back in Ohio, Elisha Gray knew nothing about it. When he first heard of Bell's success, the humble Quaker accepted defeat gracefully. But as he learned more about the design, the truth became horribly clear. Gray had invented the telephone, but Bell had taken it from right under his nose. He tried to sue, taking his claim all the way to the US Supreme Court, but he was not successful. He died in 1901, age 66, unknown and unrecognized. Bill's story, on the other hand, is the embodiment of the American dream. The impoverished Scottish immigrant died fabulously wealthy in 1922, leaving a vast business empire known today as AT&T, one of the biggest communication players in the world. But that wasn't quite the end of the story. In recent years, the mystery of who invented the phone has taken another unexpected turn. The latest twist in the tale of the telephone takes us to Cuba, where it's claimed the telephone was really invented. What's more, it's also claimed that the inventing took place a staggering 20 years before Bell had even set foot in America. Enter Havana-based Italian scientist Antonio Meucci. 
Now it's clear from his beard alone that here was a man born to telephony. But in the 1840s, Antonio's thing was analgesia. He was convinced that pain could be cured by wiring patients up to the mains. He tested his theory on his wife Esther, who, as luck would have it, suffered from arthritis. So one day, Meucci was going about his business of electrocution when Esther, as you can imagine, screamed out in agony. But her scream didn't just resonate down the corridor, it also travelled to Meucci through his copper wires. Meucci, who is rather taken with the unexpected side effect of his treatment, set about developing an instrument that could transmit speech along a wire from one place to another. In 1850, Meucci came here to New York. Now, by this time, his wife was seriously crippled with arthritis. So he wired up the whole of his house so he could hear her no matter where he was. And that, in my book, is a telephone. <laughs> This is the house in question, where Meucci spent the next 20 years perfecting his apparatus. There was a mouthpiece and an earpiece, and the sound was apparently transmitted electronically along lengths of copper wire. So if Meucci's telephone really worked, how come he didn't walk away with a patent worth billions? Why did he die a pauper? Well, in 1871, Meucci was badly burned in an accident on the Staten Island Ferry. And while he was recovering, Esther got her revenge for the electrocutions and sold her husband's invention for just six dollars. He could never afford to buy it back. More than a hundred years later, on June the 12th, 2002, after some heavy pressure from the Italian-American lobby, the US Congress passed a resolution declaring Meucci not Bell, as the inventor of the telephone. So, three men, three beards, three claims on the telephone inventor title. But for me, the winner is Bell. Whatever the US Congress resolves, and despite the rights or wrongs of his methods, it was Bell who actually got the ball rolling. When he died in 1922, the world had more than 14 million telephones. So it was Bell who changed the way the world communicates. He even changed the way the world speaks. Until the phone, we would say good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, but the telephone demanded something snappier. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Otto. Hello, hello. Once people had worked out how to use it, the telephone really took off and the Hello Girls could connect you to a different world. Mr. Parsnip speaking. Charming ladies, but a dying breed. And this is what killed them. It's the Strouger switch. The invention of the Strouger switch is another tale of deviousness, deception and death. But the man responsible wasn't an inventor, he was an undertaker, and he lived in the Wild West. Olman B. Strouger had the good fortune to be a funeral director in Kansas City, where business was booming. In the 1880s, the forward-thinking undertaker was convinced that his investment in one of those new-fangled speaking things would help breathe even more death into his business. Having bought a telephone and had it connected to the local exchange, Strouger found that his business, far from growing, began to fade away. To his horror, Strouger discovered that a competitor's wife, who worked on the exchange, was diverting all the calls to her husband's funeral parlour. Strouger decided to use his knowledge of electricity to bury the competition, and he came up with this electromechanical switch, which could connect one telephone line to another without going through the operator. 
He called it his girlless